Hi, welcome to an example on completing the square. What we've got to do is complete the square for 4x squared plus 8x plus 3. In other words, write it in this format, a times x plus b all squared plus c. And in part a, we've got to find the value of those constants a, b and c. And then in part b, we're asked to sketch the curve with the equation y equals 4x squared plus 8x plus 3. And show clearly the coordinates of any points where the curve crosses the coordinate axis. Now if you feel that you'd like to have a go at this, I'll just give you a moment or two just to pause the video. Come back when ready and you can check your work solution with mine. Okay, welcome back if you had a go. So first of all then, let's just put part A here. And I'll take our quadratic expression, 4x squared plus 8x plus 3. Now when it comes to completing the square, because that's essentially what this is all about, I'm assuming you're fairly familiar with this, but if not, you can always check out on my website, examsolutions.net, and I've got plenty of tutorials on this. So what we've got to say is that this is identical to rather than equals, okay? It's identical to. And what we do, well, there's two ways that we can do this. I'll show you both ways. The way I prefer is just to look at the first two terms, and that is we pull out 4 as a common factor. Whatever number you've got here, always pull it out the front, whether it's a common factor or not, to be honest, okay? We pull the 4 out, and then we've got x squared plus 2x, okay? That will give us 4x squared plus 8x, the first two terms, and then I put the plus 3 behind. The other way of doing this, which as I say, I'll show you in a moment, okay, once we've done this one, will be to pull the 4 out across all three terms. Now, with this one, okay, we'll just put is identical to underneath, then what we do is we complete the square on x squared plus 2x. In other words, we just have a bracket and we write x there with a squared there, and when you complete the square, remember you always halve the coefficient of x. The coefficient of x is the plus 2, so you halve it and you get plus 1. Okay? Now, x plus 1 all squared, what's that going to be? We well, should be able to do this in your head, but what I'll just do for the moment is we'll write that down here. x plus 1 all squared is going to be identical to expanding x plus 1 with another x plus 1. And if we do that, what we get is x squared, x times x, then you get x times 1 is 1x, plus another 1 times x, which is 1x, so you've got a total now of 2x. And then 1 times 1, well that's 1. So you can see that x plus 1 all squared will give us x squared plus 2x plus 1. So we're nearly there when we're looking at x squared plus 2x. What we've got to do is just subtract 1. So that is now going to give us inside the bracket x squared plus 2x. Okay? Because the 1 will cancel out. And then we've got the plus 3 on the end. So I hope that's clear. Next, all I've got to do is just expand the bracket. So you've got 4 times the first term here gives 4 times x plus 1 all squared. Then you've got 4 times the second term, the minus 1, giving minus 4. And then you've got plus 3. And then this is going to be identical to 4x plus 1 all squared minus 4 add 3 well, that's going to be minus 1. So it says find the values of the constants a, b, and c. And a is clearly going to be 4, b is going to be the 1, and c is going to be minus 1. But when I'm doing questions like this, I always like to say that this is identical to what we're asked to 
show, which in this case is a times x plus b all squared plus c. And then I write where a equals 4, b equals 1, and c equals minus 1. OK? I just like that style rather than just saying a equals 4, etc. OK? But now, I did say that there's another way that we can do this type of question. So what we'll do is we'll just do it up here, OK? Just border that off there. So we'll start with the same intro, 4x squared plus 8x plus 3. But this time, I'm going to pull 4 out across each term. OK, so that's going to be x squared plus 2x and then we've got plus 3 quarters 3 divided by 4 3 quarters okay so 4 times 3 quarters just gives us back that 3 next we go about completing the square again we put the 4 there and then when we complete the square across this have a bracket x Put a squared there, and then we halve the coefficient of x, which is going to be plus 1, coefficient of x being 2, so halve it is 1. Now, we've seen that when we expand this, we get x squared plus 2x plus 1, but I've got to make this come to 3 quarters. So I've got to take away a quarter from the 1 that is created from expanding this. OK, that 1 there take away that quarter, leaves me with the three quarters. So it is an alternative version for that. Now when I expand the bracket out, four times the first term gives us four multiplied by x plus one, all squared, and four times the minus a quarter gives me minus one. Okay, a little bit shorter than what I did here, but this version generally involves a fraction at the end, so you know I tend to avoid that, but that's up to you. And I would carry on with this exactly the same uh, with these last two lines. Okay, so that's an alternative way of doing it. Now, in part B, we're asked to sketch the curve with equation y equals 4x squared plus 8x plus 3 showing clearly the coordinates of any points where the curve crosses the coordinate axis. And to do this, the best way is by transformations of graphs. I'll show you how it works with completing the square. And again, I've got plenty of examples of this on my website. So what I'll do is we'll set up some axes first of all. Let's just put our y-axis down here and we've got our x-axis, we'll run it across here like so. Now, how is this built up from transformations of graphs? Well, what we look at first of all is this graph, okay? The graph of y equals x squared. So if I was to draw that, let's just have that as a parabola. We should be familiar with this, okay? So we've got something like that, not particularly good sketch, but uh, hopefully this will just give you the idea that I'm trying to put across. I said y equals x squared, but if we're using function notation, f of x might be better, okay? f of x equals x squared. Now, what we do next is we start to work with x plus one. So what I'm looking at now is the graph of f of x plus 1. Let me just write this down for you. f of x plus 1. I'm replacing the x in this with x plus 1. So in other words, what I get is x plus 1 all squared. And what would that graph look like? Well, what happens is we take our graph, our parabola here. Let's just rub that out. That wasn't very good. If I take our graph, I'll trace over the top of it, okay, again not very good here, but uh, the transformation f of x plus 1 
shifts the graph one unit to the left. So you're going to get something looking like that. And it's going to touch the x-axis at that point where x is minus 1. We'll just mark that on there like so, minus 1. OK? Right, so that's the graph of x plus 1 all squared. Now I'm going to multiply this by 4. In other words, I'm going to be looking at doing f of x plus 1 multiplied by 4. Let's just write it in for you. 4 times f of x plus 1. OK. So it's going to be 4 times x plus 1 all squared. Now you should be familiar with what happens when you multiply a function with 4 or any number. What it does when it's on the outside here is it gives a stretch, a stretch of scale factor 4 parallel to the y-axis, with the x-axis being invariant. That means that this point here stays put. But it becomes a much steeper graph. Say something like this, OK? We've got our parabola coming down like so, going through the minus 1, and then back up like that, OK? So that is 4 times f of x plus 1. Next, what we need to do is just subtract 1 to get the equivalent version of our graph. So what I'm looking at now is 4 times f of x plus 1 minus 1. So what I've got is what 4 lots of f of x plus 1 is, so it's 4 times x plus 1 all squared, and then we've got minus 1. And what does this do to any graph? Well, you should be familiar with this. It takes our graph, the green one in this case, and it moves it down one unit. So if I trace over this, OK, again, not very good here. Let's try again. So if I trace over it, we get something like this, OK? And now I've got to translate it by one unit downwards. So we'll move that one unit down. It's going to look something like that. It's looking a bit cluttered at the moment, OK? But what would this coordinate be at the bottom here? It would actually be minus 1, minus 1. You quite often get asked that in questions, OK? But we're not being asked that in this one. Just where does the graph cross the coordinate axis. Well, to answer that, let's just clear this of all of these graphs, except the one that we're interested in. So where does it cross the y-axis? Well, this is clearly when x equals 0. So when x equals 0, if we were to substitute it into here, you'd just get 0 plus 0 plus 3. So this point here is at 3. Or you could substitute 0 into here. It doesn't make any difference. You're going to get exactly the same answer. 0 plus 1 is 1. 1 squared is 1. 4 times 1 is 4. Take away 1 is 3. So we've got that point there. What we need to find out, though, is this point and this point here, where it crosses the x-axis. So to find out what these two points are, what we need to do is set y equal to 0. So when y equals 0, what we have is 4x squared then plus 8x plus 3 equals 0. And we can solve this by factorizing. So two brackets, we could use the quadratic formula as well. That's another way that we could do it. But if we factorize this, OK, being a prime number on the end there and plus 3, it's got to be a 3 and a 1, OK? 3 and a 1 there. But for 4x squared, what's it going to be? It could be 2x and 2x or 4x and x as part of these brackets. Looking closely, though, I can see that it's going to be 2x and 2x. 
and pluses on both of those ones there. I can see now that we're going to get 4x squared, then we're going to get 2x plus 6x, three lots of 2x there, so 2x plus 6x is the 8x, and 3 times 1 is the 3. We put each of these two factors equal to 0, so we would therefore have 2x plus 3 equals 0, or 2x plus 1 equals 0. And then I take 3 from both sides and then divide by 2, so therefore x would equal minus 3 over 2, or if in this case, if I subtract 1 from both sides, 2x would equal minus 1, divide by 2, and we'd end up with x equaling minus a half. So there's our two points there. We've got minus 3 over 2 for that one, and for this one here, we've got minus a half. Okay, so a bit cramped through here, but I hope you can uh, follow what I've done. All right.